Welcome back everybody to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers Madden 20 Franchise Rebuild. The year is 2033. We are going to go through hopefully an entire season today, all the way into the postseason, unless there is some sort of major event that we somehow haven't seen before that makes me want to slow down and watch a couple games. We'll have to see. It's certainly possible. But I anticipate we're going to go through this entire season today and go through some faster seasons as we prepare for the retirement of quarterback Tyrus Sparks. It could be after this season. I don't think so. I think he'll play a couple more years, maybe three. The regression hasn't hit him very hard yet, and he's still the number two quarterback in the league. Why is it not loading the entire screen? I don't know. Got it back, okay. So year 14 is about to begin for Tyrus Sparks, which means it would be year 15 here in the series. And I've already started to kind of prepare for the long-term sim we're going to do. And maybe Ronnie Wynn ends up being the quarterback that takes over for Tyrus Sparks. Now I have made Ronnie one of our focus players and I'll be swapping out players pretty often to make sure that uh, a lot of different players can get some bonus experience that way. But what I think I'm going to do for the series, and just so it's clear, I want to do basically a season per episode, and then an off season, then a season again, until Sparks retires. At that point, I will either do one final off season or immediately begin a long-term sim. And I would like to do that in a stream. I think it would be a lot of fun, we get to talk about the series quite a bit, and you would all be able to help me, like, make sure I check on certain players because it's going to get wild and there's going to be so many things I could overlook and I don't want to. And also, I will make sure that that stream I do ends up an edited video here on the channel for those that don't want to watch what I anticipate would be uh, a couple hours of streaming. So that is our roadmap going forward, but we're here in 2033, we're going to sim through games and I'll go through results and we'll see how things unfold. Now before we get into it, I did make one change on defense. I decided to move Antonio Tandio to safety instead of Deshaun Dotson, instead letting him play here at the nickel corner spot, primarily because his zone coverage is better than Antonio Tandy. I'm not sure if it really matters here in the simming, but I want to develop him here at corner, and we'll see how things go. I think if we get good results here, then it's a better indication of him playing well at safety and then hoping it translates when he moves back to corner. I've also moved Sharp Roll to defensive tackle. He's going to be a day one starter because of his strength and block shed, and we'll hopefully get him some good development. He will get some weeks as a focused player as well. We'll get to some upgrading now, and Isaac Laramore is up first, and I believe we're going to start with Run Stopper today. A bit worried about some of these sim games and potential run stopping issues, as we do have a couple younger players starting in our front seven, so we'll shore that up a little bit. And now we have Clinton Mills entering year two. We'll see if he can take it a step further after 800 plus yards as a rookie. We'll go deep threat, get him to scheme fit status, and four deep route running in one roll. That's incredible. Harmon Mays. I always go with the lower archetype here, just trying to make the skill set balanced. This helps out the running game, which I'm a fan of. Now, Ellis Norton did not have a very good preseason, so hopefully it turns around. He's still the starter. Same role as last year where he was extremely successful. So what do I want to upgrade here for Ellis Norton? 90 break tackle, 90 speed, 86 elusiveness. Just get out of the way of this man. Elusiveness, upgrade, scheme fit, awareness, vision, great stuff here. Hopefully we see him really take off this season and produce like we haven't seen before. He had 3.9 a carry last season. Let's see it get to the fours. Our top wide receiver, Gabe Ventura, whose season was very quiet last year until the Super Bowl. And by quiet, I'm of course talking about his standards. We saw like 800 yards last season, and that's solid, but we had seen close to 15 before. 
And last, we have Damian Burgess. Let's upgrade the Power Rusher archetype here. Burgess gets plus three. All right, let's see this season unfold, everybody. It all starts against Atlanta. We put up some good points and only allowed 17. That is a great start to the season. We didn't have that much in terms of yards, but a touchdown for Lindsley, a touchdown for Sparks, two of them, three picks against Wade Mann. He still just does not have good games against us. Ellis Norton, 3.4 carry and a touchdown. Gabe Ventura, 4 for 77. Some production here for Josh Henderson. But overall, a pretty quiet offensive day. I wonder if there was a defensive touchdown in here somewhere. We had three takeaways. We had a sack for DeVoe, picks for Bailey, Treywick, Dotson. First game, first interception. It was not a touchdown. No defensive scores for us. Another convincing win against the Jets. We posted 133 rushing in this game. Let's take a look. Four touchdowns for Tyrus Sparks. That's what I'm talking about on only 24 pass attempts. Norton, 3.8 a carry, 99 yards. Good uh, production here from Brendan Galloway on his seven carries. And Ventura takes off for 8-1-23 and a score. Galloway, though, catches two touchdowns. Now, receiving production is going to be very key for him. And now Solomon Metcalf has allowed four sacks in the first two games. Not sure what to do about that exactly. Tackle does not have uh, heavy investment on this team. A sack and a half for DeVoe and Burgess. Not bad. And a pick for Dewan Bailey. First upgrade here for Deshaun Dotson. And we're going to go with the slot archetype. Sadly did not make him a scheme fit. Hoping for some man coverage. And we do get two points. We'll know his development here after a few more sims. All right, so as far as this draft class goes, I guess I'd like to know about the quarterbacks again, just so that if Sparks retires, you know, we have an option now on the team. We have Ronnie Wynn, but I should know about the best quarterbacks in the upcoming class. And we have one first-round talent in the first round, Sidney Kilgore, 24-year-old scrambler from Oregon State, late first talent. And let's take a look at our contracts for this season. What are the demands out there? It's Seymour's year. Okay, we'll want to take care of that. DeVoe still wants the 20 plus a year. We have Joe Coakley. Dewan Bailey's going to want a pretty good deal. Marcus Durant is up this season. Tandy again. Metcalf. All right, those are the key players. And obviously, Sylvester Seymour. I'm not all that worried about regression I'd be more worried about like waiting and then getting one chance to sign him and failing so I'd kind of like to just sign him now let's go three years a little over 15 a season Seymour wants more the offense is really putting up some points they had 500 yards of offense in this game Kind of a letdown from the defense, but we get four scores again from Tyrus Sparks. We get a buck 66 and two from Ellis Norton. One of his career best games. 74 yard run was his longest. How about the receiving game? Huge day for Diamond Hubbard and Sean Riddle. Henderson, 97 and one. Three scores though for Gabe Ventura. So we're seeing Henderson kind of outproduce Clinton Mills to this point. Kind of surprising. Two sacks in this game for Damian Burgess. Forrest Forrest had one. All right. Undefeated to start this season, much like two of our division rivals. So nothing's clear yet. Has it finally happened, everybody? Do we finally get the really good receiving class that we've been waiting for? At the top, we have three players here. Early, 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 mid, and early, mid. So three players that should go in like the top 15. I hope we're not drafting there. But finally, some good receivers here at the top of the class. We have scored 35 yet again. And the defense bounced back in a major way, allowing 100. 54 yards. That's nothing. Four more scores for Sparks. His third game throwing four touchdowns this season. Good day for Norton. 
Really good day for Galloway as well. Clinton Mills, there's his best game of the season. Another score for Ventura. 62 in the air for Brendan Galloway. We have perhaps our best backfield of the series right now, and that is not a stretch at all. Antonio Tandy picked up an interception. Now going into our next game against Carolina, they are 4-0 by the way, this is for first place. We have a couple breakout chances. First up, we have a chance for Clinton Mills. Three touchdowns or 150. Those superstar jumps do not happen often. We also have a chance for Marcus Durant. So he needs to get two or 100. This is to star dev in a contract year. That's a big one. We scored our least points to this point, but we still win again. 24-17. Two scores in this one for Tyrus Sparks. Ran the football decent here with Ellis Norton. Got four for 16 from Brendan Galloway. Jeffrey Glenn always has a good day against us. Ventura gets 80, Mills 72, no upgrade for him, no upgrades this week. Those offensive ones are just so difficult, we don't see them very often. Three sacks in the game for Sylvester Seymour. Alright, so if Ronnie Wynn is to indeed take over for Tyrus Sparks one day, we've got to get some of these accuracies up and a couple of the other secondary ratings. I would like that throw under pressure a bit higher. Kind of want to go improviser here. That is his uh, archetype. Deep accuracy, under pressure, throw on the run. We'll start with field general and then we'll come back to it. Hopefully get short. Medium accuracy is up even more. So now 79 medium. That's his weakest one, I guess. That's okay. And we're still undefeated. 17-14. Now we're winning the close games, the low scoring games as well. Sparks didn't find the end zone, but Norton did, as did Galloway. Ventura again leads the team 7 for 89. I think he'll be back over 1,000 this year. I think he's got to return to that status. Pretty good day, though, as far as pass protection goes. We get one more sack for Seymour. And so far, I don't think Lindell McMillan's missed a kick all season. All right, returning to talk to Sylvester Seymour. We've raised the salary further. And Seymour signs a three-year extension. Just don't want to see him go anywhere else. As far as other deals, I'm not sure I want to make any right now. We'll have to wait and see on cap space when it comes to Dewan Bailey because it does seem that his play's gotten a lot better since I started being more critical of him. He had uh, the big season last year. I know he has, I think, two picks already this season. So we'll just see. Upgrading Ellis Norton once again, 79 overall, and this time, let's go back into Elusive Back, why not? I enjoy having him as a scheme fit, we get Spin, Juke, and Vision, not the most helpful, but it shores up a couple of those weaker ratings a bit. Uh oh, it's time everybody, Ellis Norton has a chance to upgrade. Come on, he has a 166 yard game this year, it can happen. 155 rushing we won by the way if Norton had you know almost every yard there then he got it or maybe a couple of uh, catches as well all right 212 here for Tyrus Sparks one touchdown rushing 127 for Ellis Norton oh my it's possible he needs 23 receiving sit down for this one everybody 23 come on Oh no! Seven for 101. He only had 11. And Galloway did not take any catches. Not this game. He got them all. Wow. Have we ever come that close before at running back? Maybe. I think we had like a 140 ish with like uh, Donis Askew. Wow. That is so close. Oh man, we could have had him at Superstar. Just one more screen pass or something. Alright, it's the bye week now. We're obviously going with rest and relaxation. It's also the trade deadline. I can't imagine I want to make any trades right now, though. 
We're undefeated. We're obviously thinking about the postseason at this point, and I don't think there is necessarily a position we have to address in a trade. We have a pretty complete team right now, so I think we're going to stay put. Are you kidding me? We have a breakout chance right now for Gabe Ventura. I'm not sure I've ever seen this dialogue before. It was the bye week, so this is like buggy or something. I couldn't carry us to victory, but that's about to change. For real, somebody warned those DBs in New Orleans. I'm about to make my case as the best receiver in the NFL. Gabe Ventura. Four touchdowns or 200 yards to get to X Factor. Still undefeated. I don't think that Ventura got there. We had a lot of rushing yards in this game, though. Two scores for Sparks. 157-1 and one for Norton. Now he has the game that would get him to Superstar. A 96-yard run in there, by the way. That's a big deal here at running back. Like, the simming in this game is kind of broken. The running game simming is just, like, two yards, three yards, two yards. Once you reach a certain point, though, you get the ability to break off the long runs, and that makes a huge difference. Ventura had 102 and 2, so sadly only halfway to what he needed. Still a pretty good game. How about the defense? Chuck Roll, there we go. Got a sack. McMillan did miss a field goal and an extra point this week. The extra point was blocked. Field goal was mid-range. Look, I know what you're thinking. Ventura said he was going to have a big game. Yeah, I get it, but I ain't taking the blame for that game. You did not call the right plays for me. Okay. Interesting uh, dialogue there from Gabe Ventura, who still had two touchdowns and 100 yards. And we're 8-0. No. Ellis Norton is back again, everybody. Receiving back this time. The morale boost is helping out now. Catching, catching traffic, good stuff. Ellis Norton is the 17th ranked halfback in the league. Let's take a look at his stats here. It's the halfway point. 106 a game. He is about to eclipse his career high in yards. He's almost a yard better in terms of average. Oh, man. Big things are happening this year for Ellis Norton. One player who is also a focus player this season is Denzel Hakeem, our rookie right guard. I don't know what's going to happen next year with Joe Coakley or in the next couple years with our offensive line, but Hakeem's a great player to potentially take over. Still getting to upgrade Dwayne Shrewick, another success story from last season. He's up to 76 overall. Strength upgrade's pretty nice. So I already scouted the kicker class, actually, and it's not very good. Our best bet may be developing Lindell McMillan. Please give us accuracy. More than awareness. That's not enough. But 75 kick accuracy is about the best we can do. And he is the number 28 ranked kicker. So by that number, he needs to be starting on a team. There is our very first loss of the season. A high scoring game against the Dallas Cowboys led by Baker Mayfield. Two touchdowns for Tyrus Sparks and two interceptions. I don't think he's thrown many of those this season. All right, the running game, finally contained. Ventura, 213. So this would have been the X-Factor breakout game. 200 yards here. 98 after the catch. Not bad. Galloway scored in the air. So the first game that we don't win all season, we're still in very good shape. A missed field goal again, though, for McMillan. And this was a deep one. Chuck Roll gets the run stopper upgrade. He's gotten a couple of these here as a rookie. He's a 73 overall at the moment. And I believe his strength went up at some point. Big win for us here. We came in with one loss, the Panthers with two. And with this victory, we basically won the division. It's not a guarantee. But unless we have a late season collapse, we're winning the division again. Two touchdowns, one for Lindsley, one for Sparks, and Ellis Norton. 92 yards. I think this gets him to 1,000 on the season. I think that got it done. Wow, Martin Woodard went to the uh, Panthers. That's interesting. Jeffrey Glenn, 7 for 92. Ventura, 6 for 68. 
So just one loss on the season. Everything's going pretty well for us. I'm curious on a couple players, though, that I forgot to check last episode where they ended up. But first off, Kendall Gabriel. I can't remember if the Patriots did actually sign him. They were in first place the last time I saw. They didn't get him. Kendall Gabriel was actually signed by the Buffalo Bills. He's currently an 81 overall at 25 years old. There are the ratings. He's a captain for Buffalo. And how's he performing? Wow. Career best numbers he's on pace for in every category. That's pretty good. There was also Dennis Lewis who went to the Kansas City Chiefs. He is also a captain on their team. And this season, he's posted two more interceptions, two sacks. Good production, again. Another victory here against the Giants, 27-20. Three scores in this one for Tyrus Sparks. Norton only had seven carries for 32 yards. We did not run the football very much in this game for some reason. Kendall had three carries, though. Ventura, two more scores. I think he'll have a nice stat line here at the end of this season. A few sacks here for our top rushers. Caver a pick and 16 tackles. But that's not the only development to come out of this game. How about the frustrations of Ellis Norton? He's been dominating all season. He gets seven carries. And he's like, wait a minute here, what's going on? He wants the ball. Brown signed Peter Starkey. Okay, he was like a 67 overall quarterback on the practice squad. What's going on with Cleveland that they had to sign a practice squad quarterback? You see this every now and then. And their starter, Zachary Winslow, is hurt. So Peter Starkey goes from practice squad to starter. We win yet again against Atlanta. Three interceptions in this one for Sparks. We picked off Mann again twice. Ellis Norton got the football in this one. He was not as efficient as he's been this season, but he got his chances. Hopefully he'll be happy with those results. But we still have just one loss on the year. Not a bad game. There you go, Ellis Norton. Now his uh, XP goes up, his morale goes up. And now his overall is probably going to go up as well. Or not. Power back upgrade, though. Norton gets awareness, stiff arm, strength, trucking. He can still get better. 12 and 1. Just another dominant win here for the Bucks, and four scores for Tyrus Sparks. 96 and 2 for Ellis Norton. Ventura, a buck 33. Not bad. Another great showing. I think we're going to have some league leaders this season. I think Ventura's got a shot to earn X Factor naturally. I think we have a shot to see Norton go up in development with his great season. Just a few games until the postseason, and you already know we're going to be part of it. Nearly every team that has this awesome season has a game down the stretch that humbles them ahead of their playoff run. That's this for us. 38-13, we lose to Philly. This team is also, I think, pretty good. Cal Cooper, I know, has had some good years. What happened there? 11 for 17. All right. That is a bad game. Let's not do that again. Um, maybe two games of that nature. I know I always come back to the 2009 Vikings, but they did that twice. Two primetime games, Cardinals, Panthers. Separated, uh, there was a game in between. They destroyed, uh, I think the Bengals or something at home. But, uh, two humbling experiences is not uncommon. But seven points here is all we could muster against the Saints. All right, throw that one out. We do seem to have the number one seed, though, so there's not much for us to play for at this point. And we stumble into the postseason with three straight losses. Now, I did not play Sparks in this game. Instead, I wanted to see Ronnie Wynn get his first career start, and Wynn did not get the win. He did throw three touchdowns, though. Wow, the running game, the last three weeks. That's really disappointing. I hope that doesn't cost uh, him like first place in any categories because I'm hoping to see him get the superstar just through uh, stat production. 
But the season is now over. We have gone 12 and 4, and we are the number one seed here in the NFC. And our first playoff game will be against the Saints, a team that already beat us once late in the year. We'll get to simming the postseason after we check on some stats. Looks like it was a pretty good year for us, but a very weak finish to the year. Second ranked offense, 16th ranked defense. Oh, I see over there Norton, second in rushing yards. Might still be good enough. Wow, some good stuff here though. 33 and 8 for Tyrus Sparks. Awesome campaign. Norton, 1,309 yards, 13 touchdowns. I think he's going to get the superstar. I hope so, anyway. Receiving, Gabe Ventura, 15 touchdowns, 1,400 yards. A good step up, too, for Josh Henderson, who was our third receiver and played really well. Mills, a step down, but still a decent season for him. Durant, four touchdowns. Galloway, seven in the air. Not bad. How about sacks allowed? Metcalf, 11. Otherwise, really solid. Including Harmon Mays, only allowed three. For the defense, I want to say sacks were down. 10 for Seymour, 8.5 for Burgess, 7.5 for DeVoe. And then not much from the rest of the team. Forest, Forest, only three. That came on 600 snaps, too. Okay, how about the interception game? Four for Bailey, two for Beekman. Kicking, McMillan only attempted 13. He missed three of them. And one was medium. None were attempted under 29 yards. Missed a couple long ones. So overall, I think a really good year for McMillan. Let's go league leaders now. You know what? Before we do that, I just got to check on our friend, Ollie Sparks. I just got to know if he played much this season. 14 touchdowns, 4.4 a carry. Ollie Sparks is going to have this Frank Gore-like career. He'll just play forever and be like good enough to come back for the next year. Even as speed goes down. Wow. 83 speed for Ollie Sparks. This is his 13th season. It's been 13 years since I passed on you for Frederick Hughes? That's a long time. All right, so league leader, Stanley Wright, leads in yards, superstar dev. I'm not sure if that's new or how long he's had superstar, but that's pretty cool. Raphael Hodge, TJ Schmidt. We have some new quarterbacks starting to take over the league, it seems. Most interceptions, though, 17. All right, running game. Lynn Page does beat Norton for yards and touchdowns, but Norton is behind Ollie Sparks here. So third in touchdowns, second in yards. I think that guarantees at least Superstar, if not... Well, can they go up more than one? I think it's just one. I think Norton's going to Superstar, though. Then Ventura leads the league. I think he's getting X-Factor. Is this Triple Crown? It is triple, not crown. Oh no. Franklin Williams. Two catches. All right, still a phenomenal year for the offense and the team overall. Here are career stats now for our team. 444 touchdowns for Tyrus Sparks. An incredible legacy that he may continue into the future or may not. Ellis Norton though, on his way. 2,500 yards, 37 touchdowns in three seasons. And that's just rushing. Not bad. For receiving, Ventura, 7,600. For sacks, Seymour, 5 off of 100. He should get there next season. How about interceptions? 26 for Beekman. That's a lot by modern standards. And let's go to uh, some career numbers for the NFL. Baker Mayfield, 527 touchdowns. Pat Mahomes over 500. Lamar Jackson, 475. Ollie Sparks, your active leading rusher, over 10,000 yards. Adonis Eskew's also up there. Now playing with the Chargers, apparently. He is a 75 overall. George Kittle, 1,000 catches, 11,000 yards. 
Tremont Langster, though, is behind him, followed by Garrison Miller, who's only played nine years. So he has a chance, I think, to get to a thousand catches. Not many actually make it. That's a lot of production for Herb Smith. All right, those are the touchdown leaders, and let's go defense. Active interception leader, Derwin James, Jermichael Beekman, but James has played longer. And for sacks, we'll go by conference so it shows everybody. 124 for Robert Cush. That's special. And 95 and a half for Deron Gilbert. 82 and a half for Kevon DeVoe. How about most active interceptions? Baker Mayfield, 159. By the way, here are legacy scores around our league, and the highest score from anybody drafted in this series by any team is actually Robert Cush. More than Tyrus Sparks. Sparks has two more Super Bowls, but Cush has uh, less yearly awards. He's less in every category. But you do get legacy like based on in-game play, too. Like, I think if you throw a touchdown, you get a legacy. Here, three tackles plus three legacy. That seems like a little much. Three tackles is more valuable than a sack in terms of legacy. All right, some great stuff there, but now it's time, everybody, to get on with the simulating in this playoff run. We stumbled our way into the postseason after starting 12-1. and Don't tell me our season ends here. It ends here. 17-13. The Saints are victorious. We just lost four consecutive games. Oh, did I keep Ronnie Wynn as the starter? Oh, man. I totally forgot to switch it back to Sparks because I did all that stat stuff. I don't know if it would have made a difference. Possibly. We lost by four. But we still played poorly down the stretch. Win had 259, one touchdown, one pick. Maybe playing Sparks makes a difference there, but... Wow. I can't believe our season ends like that, though. Four straight losses. That is a disappointing way for it all to end here. Alright, Sparks, please don't retire. That can't be the way your career ends. Yeah, I totally forgot to fix this. But maybe we would have lost regardless. Because we did not play well in any of those last games. Where'd the scoring go? Here's our team schedule. Put up all those points and then the final games. 13, 7, 24. That was the game Ronnie Wynn started. And then 13 here. So, one of our best seasons in a long time. And we don't even win a playoff game. Not even one. I'm sure we're basically having our entire team in the Pro Bowl. I know Sparks is QB1. Ellis Norton's there. Ventura. And probably many others, including Lester, Bradley, Coakley, Damian Burgess, and Seymour, Caver, Bailey, Treywick. All right. So we now look to see developments. Retirements and regression. The Saints are in the Super Bowl, too. I can't believe that. All right, let's check out developments, everybody. Do we have some good news? Whoops, this is the wrong menu. Do we have any good news? We certainly do! Superstar X Factor Gabe Ventura. Superstar Ellis Norton. There you go. Two skill players make the jump. Defensively. Oh my. Wow. Trey Wick to superstar. Another amazing success story in this series. Trey Wick's played all of two seasons. He was drafted in the fourth round. And after replacing Jerome Page, he becomes a star. A superstar. Well, we know that safety is not going to be as much of a need with him around. That is incredible. And still Sylvester Seymour is that star. I can't explain that one. 
Oh yeah, I forgot about awards. Went through everything else, but this. Lamar Jackson, another MVP. Must have like 10 of those. Doug Peterson now coaching the Baltimore Ravens. Okay. And how about these awards? Offensive Player of the Year, Preston Callaway. Dominique Peel on defense. John Taney, Rookie of the Year. Mason Lehman for the defense. Callaway, Page, Page over Norton. Ventura, top wide out. Bradley, Coakley, Lester, love seeing that. Seymour, another award, but still no superstar dev for him. That's just the weirdest thing. I've never seen a player that productive that has not seen his development go up. Like, it happens quite a bit. We have Ellis Norton at superstar. We have Trewick now at superstar. Why not Sylvester Seymour? What does it take? And now retirements everybody will we see Tyrus Sparks call it a career I basically benched him in the playoffs that can't be the last game at least one more year first off the Raiders win the Super Bowl the Saints do not go all the way and now retirements Derwin James uh oh I see Joe Coakley I was not expecting him to retire Kittle Marvin Owens, Irv Smith, Baker Mayfield, Ollie Sparks has retired. Wow. I was kind of hoping he'd keep playing. Zeke Bragg. Oh boy, William Alexander, Corey Kirkendall. I think we're in the clear here. Okay. No retirement. Good news for Tyrus Sparks. He'll be back next season. I was not expecting Coakley to retire, but we are prepared now. He played his entire career here with the Bucks, and we already drafted his replacement last season. So we will have another offseason coming your way next time, everybody. And let's take a look now at uh, regression. Sparks only down eight. That's really good, a 90 overall. DeVoe's a 90. Caver an 88. And Beekman loses 30. Whoa. That's not good. Seymour down 7. Tandy 19. Bradley 5. Metcalf 9. Lindsley 8. Waylon 10. That's early at 28. Are you kidding me? All right, everybody. There you go. A year in the books for Tampa. We can't win the Super Bowl this time. But we'll be back again, off-season coming your way, and then another full season. And here are active uh, contract demands. Looks like DeVos is down kind of considerably. But we should have some extra cap space now with the retirement of Joe Coakley. So we'll see how we look to spend it. We have about $38 million in cap space, very similar to last off-season. We'll see what we can do with it and hopefully get this team ready for another run. But that is it for this one, everybody. Hope you enjoyed the episode. Please leave a like if you did, and subscribe to the channel. Hit the bell for notifications so you know when the next episode goes live, and I will see you all in the next one. Have a great day.